Hello everybody, I'm Dare Terrors. Welcome aboard. Welcome to Glasgow in Scotland. We are aboard our Panavia Tornado or Tornado, depending on how you want to pronounce it. She's not a pretty looking aircraft. I believe, ah yes, flaps handle the swing wings. I believe that was the same on another airplane I, ha I did earlier. All right, and then she does have full flaps. Look at that, look at all that flap. Oh my gosh, look at all that flap. That was a lot of flap. It can flap its wings. Yes, it can. All right, this is X, Iris Simulation Payware. It was payware for the uh, Flight Simulator 2004. And then they were kind enough to uh, release it for free. Let's turn on all of our lights. Uh, for the, for Flight Simulator X, because, well, no reason not to. Well, they could have charged for it. So we really thank them because they're nice enough to give it to us for free. Let's, uh, let's take off. But not with full flap. Heck no, not with full flap. We don't need all of that flap. There, that's good. All right, let's run up our, tur our two Turbo Union RB199-34R 34 Mark 103 after burning turbo fans, 9,850 pounds of thrust dry, uh, 17,270 pounds of thrust, Afterburning. Eh, okay, you can't see the afterburning, but whatevs. Whatevs. I'd like to see one of these take off in Glasgow, huh, guys? Eh, maybe, maybe those of you that actually live in Scotland. <laughs> I don't know. We all right. We're gonna go ahead and swing those wings in, so we can get some some speed without danger and death. Okay, I'm gonna throttle back too. All right, this is a twin engine, variable geometry aircraft manufactured by Italy, United Kingdom, and Germany. West. <laughs> yes, West. Uh, this was done, this was started during the Cold War. There was a West Germany, so there you go. Three variants, fighter bomber, electronic combat, and interceptor. The UK, she was looking to replace the Avro Vulcan and the Blackburn Buccaneer. At the same time, several countries were looking to replace their F-104 Starfighter. Due to diverse requirements, a multi-role aircraft design was agreed upon. Something I can do a little bit of everything. 26 March 1969, the United Kingdom, West Germany, Italy, and the Netherlands agreed to form Panavia. Aircraft, GMBH. The aim was to create an aircraft capable of tactical strike, recon, air defense, and maritime roles. Whee! I'm gonna slow that throttle down a little bit. Kinda lower, stop climbing some. We're gonna go this way too, because I feel like it. 1970 rolled along and the Netherlands pulled out. They decided that it just was not going to work the way they wanted to. Several other countries were initially interested in this aircraft, including most of the Commonwealth countries, Canada, Australia, etc., as well as Japan. Many of these countries, of course, went on to choose the FA-18 Hornet. In the case of Japan, it was a Mitsubishi uh, F-1, I believe, which is a Japanese version of the F-16. So, not as, as well-selling as maybe they expected. Seraph was designed for low-level penetration of enemy defenses to deliver conventional and nuclear weapons to invading countries of the Warsaw Pact. Now, those variable geometry wings that we had at takeoff allow for minimal drag during the low-level dash towards a well-prepared enemy. So you'd swing your wings back so you'd have them out when you were cruising in, in your, your cruise stage of flight because you you want to maintain your fuel. You know, well, if you don't have your wings swung back, so if I swing them out, let's see if I can swing them out. Are they swinging out? There we go. So now they're, oh yeah, I'm apparently going way too fast. Hush. I don't even know how fast I am going. Let's see if we can pop a brake. We can pop a brake. There's our big air brakes right there. Woo. Hi, hello, hi, hey, how's it going? Yeah. 
Okay, you don't like that? Fine, I'll swing them back in. Uh, so... I don't know what the deal is today. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know what's going on. Alright, so you'd have... You'd usually fly at a, a fuel-efficient speed with your wings out. And then, when it came time to dash, you're going to swing those wings back. You're going to be going high-performance, low-altitude. Additionally, there were advanced navigation of flight computers. They were designed to reduce pilot workload, ease aircraft control. At German encouragement, significant attention was put on stall performance. Didn't really look to stall there on the takeoff from Glasgow, but this aircraft does have real stall performance to it. Probably need to head back towards Glasgow. This presumes I can figure out which direction that is. I believe it's this way. For stall, the wings can sweep forward to 25 degrees and deploy full span flaps and slats. Also, unique for jet aircraft like this, fighter aircraft like this, we has thrust reversers. Yes, I did say has with a Z. <laughs> ah, there's Glasgow. Look, I can look down at my GPS. Yay. Primary controls are fly-by-wire hybrid. Not a full fly-by-wire system, at least in the initial design. The newer and retrofitted ones probably are full fly-by-wire, but initially it was an analog quadruplex command and stability augmentation system that was connected to a digital autopilot and flight director system. So it was a hybrid. Of course, we have a crew of two. Initially, this was uh, debated by the powers that were uh, running the show here. Uh, that was initially debated. Germany wanted two pilots. The UK wanted one. I think that's how it came down. It might have been the opposite direction. Either way, it went with a two-pilot roll. So there you go. That's why we have two of them. <laughs> Top speed, Mach 2.2. Range was 870 miles, which was about 1,390 kilometers. On board, there is two 27mm Mauser BK-27 revolver cannons. I have no idea where they're located on this aircraft. Presumably right there. Duh. The little Mauser cannon marks. I'm going to hit that hill, aren't I? Oh, boy. Don't sink. There we go. Uh, and 11 hard points for up to 9,000 kilograms or 19,800 pounds of weaponry. Everything from... Air to air, air to ground, uh, ECM jammer pods, nuclear delivery systems of various types, bombs, guided and unguided. Uh, it's This aircraft could do it all and can do it all. Now, where is Glasgow's airport? I think I'm flying straight at it. I think. Hi, airport. Where are you? Are you somewhere I can land at? Or are you going to hide from me? No airport? Uh, okay, so while we're waiting... Oh, I think it's this way. While we're waiting on the airport to come into view. Shift one. All right, there's that. Ah, there's the airport. Two gives us... Uh, engine and radio. That is our lightning switch. An autopilot. There's a GPS. That's the end of it. Well, that's not bad. Okay, we are going at 106, so let's... Let's put these out. It's probably going to start squawking at me a bit. Or not. Well, that's good. All right, we're going to try to make our landing at Glasgow Airport. We're at a severe nose-up attitude here. <laughs> so much like some of the other aircraft that we've covered before, the B-1 bomber, the XB-70 bomber, uh, even some of the British bombers, this aircraft was designed to do low-level tactical strikes. And then what evolved itself and had to evolve itself from there to more altitude based strikes because missiles became better and it became pure suicide 
to uh, let's get ourselves lined up a little bit better. It became suicidal. <laughs> Sorry, trying to I'm trying to fly the plane and not die. All right, there we go. It became suicidal to to run on a low level attack like that. So the aircraft evolved and became what they are now, which is these multi-role aircraft capable of just about whatever you need. As we set up at top, this aircraft was designed for tactical strike, recon, air defense, and maritime. So you're, you're looking, and, and today, additionally on top of that, it's also used for electronic countermeasures. So ECM jammer pods and, and things of that like. line this guy up now this is x iris software so this is very good looking aircraft all around this is a nice looking aircraft it comes with a manual about what all the little buttons are and they do say that most of these buttons are pushable and i'm not going to really push them all i'll let you discover that it also comes with a whole lot of aircraft i was like oh this is going to have a few aircraft right yeah it has more than just a few aircraft okay this is ridiculous. Uh, much like the the P-40 Warhawk that I did way back when that had huge number of aircraft, this is much the same. So be prepared for that. Initially, if you don't know how to edit your aircraft config, it's gonna show up as the manufacturer of Iris, which is fine. Um, I think we're gonna take uh, this aircraft's, um, oh well, brakes. Go. Engine off. And. Okay, we're down. And reversing thrust. So, something very rare amongst fighter aircraft. Very rare. There we go. We can close those. Yeah, that would be really silly to have both open. I like how it's, it's smart enough to be like, yeah, don't be an idiot. You can't have your brakes and your reverse thrust at the same time. But there you go. Alright, we're gonna we're gonna bother everybody and park our aircraft right here. And we'll pop the hood. <laughs> Such as it is. And look, when you pop the hood, look at that! Oh look at all the little things that come out. Is that the hood or the engine being off? Let's find out. Close. Okay, so the engine's running, you remove all of the remove before flight tags, and opening the cockpit adds the ladder. Oh, that's very nice. Very nice. I approve this aircraft. <laughs> all right, so here we go. The Panavia Tornado, or Tornado, or whatever you want to call it. The link is down below, as always. This has been your Flight Simulator X Plane Spotlight. I've been Dare Tubbers. Until next time, watch out for low-level tornado flights over Scotland.